two weeks ago, I updated you from this podium on the progress we had made as a country in our fight against coronavirus. And in many ways, that progress continues. The number of patients admitted to hospitals is still falling and now stands at just over 100 each day. In April, there were more than 3,000 coronavirus patients in mechanical ventilation beds, but now the latest figure is 87. The number of deaths continues uh, to fall, and although uh, one is too many, that is obviously encouraging. Uh, but I've also consistently warned that this virus could come back and that we would not hesitate to take swift and decisive action as required. And I'm afraid that in parts of Asia and Latin America, the virus is gathering pace, and some of our European friends are also struggling to keep it under control. As we see these rises around the world, we can't fool ourselves that we are exempt. We must be willing to react to the first signs of trouble. Today, the weekly survey by the Office for National Statistics reports that the prevalence of the virus in the community in England is likely to be rising for the first time since May. Around 1 in 1,500 now have the virus compared to 1 in 1,800 on the 15th of July and 1 in 2,000 on the 2nd of July. The ONS also estimate that there are now 4,900 new infections every day, up from around 3,000 per day on the 14th of July and 2,000 per day at the end of June. We just can't afford to ignore this evidence. It's vital to stress, of course, that we are in a far better position to keep the virus under control now than we were at the start of the pandemic. But as I say, we cannot be complacent. And I won't stand by and allow this virus to threaten to cause more pain and more heartache in our country. So that's why last night the Health Secretary announced new restrictions on household contact in the Northwest, specifically Greater Manchester and in parts of East Lancashire and West Yorkshire. These are targeted measures on social contact between households, which the data tells us is driving the current increase in cases. Businesses and workplaces should continue as before in those areas. I know how hard it is to have restrictions like this imposed on seeing your family uh, and your friends, but we have to act rapidly in order to protect those we love. And we know this sort of intervention works. Measures taken in Leicester and Luton have suppressed the virus and allowed us to, to relax measures. And you remember, at every point, uh, I have said our plan to reopen the society and the economy is conditional, that it relies on continued progress against the virus, and we would not hesitate to put the brakes on if required. With those numbers creeping up, our assessment is that we should now squeeze that brake pedal, squeeze that brake pedal in order to keep the virus under control. On Saturday, the 1st of August, you'll remember we had hoped to reopen in England a number of the higher risk settings that had remained closed. And today, I'm afraid we're postponing those changes for at least a fortnight. That means until the 15th of August at the earliest, casinos, bowling alleys, skating rinks and the remaining close contact services must remain closed. Indoor performances will not resume. Pilots of larger crowds in sports venues and conference centres will not take place. And wedding receptions of up to 30 people will not be permitted. But ceremonies, of course, can continue to take place in line with COVID secure guidelines. And I know that the steps that we're taking will be a real blow to many people, to everyone, obviously, whose wedding plans have been disrupted or who cannot now celebrate Eid in the way that they would wish. And I'm really, really sorry about that, but we simply cannot take the risk. We will, of course, study the data carefully and move forward with our intention to open up as soon as we possibly can. Most people in this country are following the rules and doing their best to control the virus. But we must keep our discipline and our focus, and we cannot be complacent. I've asked the Home Secretary to work with the police and others to ensure the rules which are already in place are properly enforced. That means local authorities acting to close down premises and cancel events which are not 
following COVID secure guidance, and it means a greater police presence to ensure face coverings are being worn where this is required by law. We will also extend the requirement to wear a face covering to other indoor settings where you're likely to come into contact with people you do not normally meet, such as museums, galleries, cinemas, and places of worship. We now recommend face coverings are worn in these settings, and this will become enforceable in law from the 8th of August. At this stage, we are not changing the rules on social contact nationally. I don't want to tell people to spend less time with their friends, but unless people follow the rules and behave safely, we may need to go further.